Hello, everybody. My name is Ginny Page. Welcome to my pigsty of a workshop. I'd like to show you some of my work. Thank you very much, Kitty. I'd like to start with uh, one of my largest works. It's called All We Want Is Love. Uh, when I was doing the head, I loved the way her head kind of uh, laid heavily on the pillow. I loved the way that her hair kind of uh, was strewn across all this lovely lace and stuff and the way that her hand was uh, showing through the hair that was on top of her hand. I love to paint creases in material and uh, this, uh, this sheet especially was very, very wrinkled. Um, somebody pointed out to me that if I'd ironed it, it would have taken me a lot less time to paint. But I love to paint all the shadows and all the intricate patterns in this, uh, in this lovely piece of material. I love to paint old vintage lace and it's a very tricky thing to do. You have to have very small paint brushes. But I love the play of light going through those little holes in all that embroidery. It's really, really sweet. I decided to put this chair into the composition. Um, I just like the way that uh, the angle kind of brought your eye a little bit higher up into the composition. I like the way that the wood was hard and black in comparison to the softness of the model, the softness of the skin and the softness of the material. I also like the details of those uh, little nails in the upholstery of the chair. Uh, they're almost invisible, but uh, I just like the way the light hit that and the way that that sheet is really nice and flat. These are the brushes that I like to use on my big paintings. They're quite big. I start off with a really, really broad brush that I often use for painting window sills and stuff. This is good for the background, for doing big areas of black and big areas of skin. The next size is a, is a hog's hair flat. Uh, they're quite cheap and I use a lot of these. I use these to do the skin, the big areas, and then uh, going down to the very, very thin paint brushes to do the details. My favorite brush at the minute is a Winsor & Newton Cosmo Top Spin, and they're excellent. My little cat seems to like this paintbrush too. She plays with it all the time. A lot of artists have a kind of system with their palettes. They have cool colors on one side and warm colors on the next. Mine is a little bit of a mess, but I kind of know where I'm going because I seem to recognize the blobs on, uh, on the different areas on my palette. It doesn't seem to be a problem for me. This was a, a quirky little painting I did in 2017. It's quite different from my other paintings. It's uh, rather surrealistic. Um, I did this for a, a project on uh, Lewis Carroll and about the, uh, the fairy stories of uh, uh, Alice in Wonderland. I dressed my son up as the Mad Hatter and uh, didn't really know where I was going from there, so my composition wasn't very well planned. But um, anyway, it started off uh, as, a, as like a portrait and then all these little tiny bits and bobs came one after the other. Um, I thought that uh, the little birds in his hair nesting and the, the cotton reels were quite a funny little addition to put on. Uh, and my, my childish mind just kind of went from there. I put different things in the hats and uh, in the hat and uh, put a little bit of uh, hat pins and a little mouse. Uh, I love animals and all sorts of cutie, cutie pie things. Then the rabbit came and my favorite teapot plasters on the fingers and a thimble and the little pansy or a, a viola as it's called playing the violin. I suppose that's like a little self-portrait of myself when I was learning to play the violin. I decided to paint my own hand finishing the painting here. I just thought that was a nice idea because uh, I always hated my thumbnail but there you know that's my honest picture of my hand never getting finished with anything. I also like the idea of the Trompeloy signature here. This is another quirky little picture I did a couple of years ago on the theme of Alice in Wonderland. Um, yeah, I didn't really know where I was going with this picture. It just kind of developed bit by bit, but it was really, really fun and took me forever to do. The little girl in the middle of the painting, I've been teaching her for the last 11 years, a sweet little girl. Here in the bottom of the painting, I added all my rescue animals. I have chickens, I have kittens. I collect vintage porcelain that you can see here. Uh, there's a little frog there going to sleep. Um, there's little eggs hatching. Um, a footman here who's a half frog and half washerwoman. Uh, what have we got here? We've got uh, the little girl again jumping out of a teapot, the white rabbit, the caterpillar, uh, and various uh, silly little bits and bobs that, uh, that make me smile. 
Um, up here we have the uh, fish footman who uh, turned out looking a little bit like Donald Trump. That was not my uh, intention to do that, but it ended up looking quite funny. This is a little still life that I'm working on at the minute. I'm almost finished. Um, I love these old vintage bowls, hand-painted bowls. I actually stole this one from my mother. She doesn't even know that yet. But I love the colours, the blacks and the maroons and the pinks. And uh, I grew my own raspberries and blackberries and decided to make my own little personal picture of it. This is another still life picture that I'm uh, almost finished to with blueberries and raspberries. Originally there were blueberries over the whole picture but I changed some of it and put two raspberries in because I think there was a little bit of red missing in the composition. Um, yeah, I'm missing a little bit on the leaf and uh, to do the background and just general finish really. When I'm uh, finishing some of my still life projects and I'm waiting for them to dry, I like to go on to some bigger projects. This is something I've just started and is not looking very good at the moment. I've tried to do a copper patinated background and I wanted it to be uh, like a verdigris finish with a beautiful green turquoise colour so I could match it to her earring. Um, I wanted the hair and the, and, the, and the clothing to kind of fade out into the background, but it's not quite how I wanted it. I wanted it a little bit more green like this, um, but never mind, I can redo it and I can repatinate it. I can see too many brush strokes here and that was a mistake, but that's how it is sometimes. You don't know how things are going to work out. Uh, I wanted to do a kind of embossed finish around the edges of the painting, uh, almost like an icon painting. I, I, I made up this design from something that was I was inspired by, something Art Deco I found, uh, and made it kind of, kind of uh, so it fitted around the edges. And I wasn't really that pleased with it because when I did the patination, you, you, I couldn't really see the embossing anyway. But maybe I will re-gild it and see what happens. The model put on this dress. Uh, I told her to put on something feminine and difficult to paint and probably see-through and patterned. Oh, I don't know why I put myself through this really, but this is really, really challenging. Very, very beautiful material. Let's see how that goes. This is the necklace that uh, I want to have on the painting. I love painting strange jewellery, but uh, I can't do any of this detail really until the skin is absolutely perfect all around the necklace. Um, I have to make sure that is spot on before I do all the details, otherwise I'm going to ruin the work I've done on the jewellery. Um, this is a rather unusual piece of jewellery. It looks like a kind of religious symbol, but in fact it is not. Uh, this cross can be undone, unscrewed, and there's a little tiny teaspoon hidden inside it uh, and it's supposed to be for cocaine <laughs> but uh, no worries uh, my model does not take cocaine in case you're wondering I decided to paint this little bird on the painting um, this was a little bird that I rescued um, in a car park I was at work and I found this little bird on the floor and it had um, must have flown into a window or something so I picked it up and um, nurtured it back to health and it flew away. I wanted to have it on the painting because I just fell in love with it. Um, my model is a very sensitive girl and I thought the little bird was sweet against the little bit of the badass kind of uh, revolver tattoo that she has on her right hand side. I'm going to zoom in a bit on the face here um, to show you how awful this looks at the moment. She looks very pasty faced and kind of creepy looking and that's because my values are not there right now. Um, I use lots of thin layers and uh, paint over and over again and as you can see the eyes were kind of okay at one stage and then I've painted them over and over and over with thin layers and lost a lot of the detail. Um, I'm dying to do the eyelashes but uh, I can't do that until the values in the eye are absolutely perfect. So details come last. The earring is a turquoise stone and my idea was to match it with the verdigris of the background but there's not quite enough verdigris in the background yet but we'll see how it turns out. This is another little still life that I did about a year ago. Very, very simple, same principle as the other ones, uh, done in a light box, set up in a light box, a very simple little vintage medicine bottle I found at a flea market and some little tiny pansies in the, from the garden. Um, the message was really uh, nature's medicine. Um, you know, nature can heal all, basically, and I just like the motif. I thought it was very sweet. 
I've painted a lot of these uh, still lives on a, on a little ledge. In fact, it's um, a piece of slate I found in the chicken house uh, and I use it as a kind of shelf. I'm uh, inspired by a, an artist called Adrian Kuat. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it properly. He's a golden age Dutch artist from the 16th century and he did hundreds of little tiny intricate paintings on a shelf with just the, the same light source on every painting. He had his light source coming from the right. I prefer mine to come from the left. But this is my ode to him. Here's another one, just a very, very simple one again. Um, the same ledge, the same lighting in my light box, uh, pomegranate with some strawberry blooms. Well, that's about it. Just a brief look at some of the latest work I've been doing. Thank you so much for watching. And I just hope my cat isn't going to tip everything over now. <laughs> Thanks again. Bye.